Hey, what's up everyone? This is Minnesota Mike back with you for another video. This is another one in my vlog series that I do through the Memphis Songwriters Association in conjunction with the blog that I write for them talking all about songwriting and what has worked for various artists over the course of a handful of years, whether those songs have been hits or not. So this latest kick that I'm on is called You're Not Entitled to That Title. And basically what we're looking at is we're looking at two different songs per video that uh, actually share the same title, but go in different directions with that particular title. So this week we uh, looked at uh, the song uh, Teenage Dream by Katy Perry, and uh, we also looked at a song called Teenage Dream by Olivia Rodrigo. Next, we're going to uh, look at Dead Flowers by the Rolling Stones, as well as Dead Flowers by Miranda Lambert. So lyrically, the Rolling Stones' Dead Flowers deals with the end of a relationship, as the narrator encourages his ex-girlfriend, or possibly current girlfriend who he just caught cheating, to send him dead flowers as a symbol of their relationship. This is sung after it's revealed in the first verse that she was talking to some rich folk that she knows, and uh, there are two uses of the title that strike me as being particularly interesting. First, there's the assertion in the chorus that she should send him dead flowers at his wedding. Of course, the flowers at weddings are normally in full bloom, representing life, rejuvenation, and all that crap. But here, it's clear how the ex feels about the narrator, and he wants to stay consistent. Don't pretend that you care about me. Keep showing your true feelings. And clearly the narrator is broken up about it too, saying I'll be in my basement with a needle and a spoon. No doubt so depressed that he's taking up sewing. So when uh, this particular person who broke his heart finally dies, he'll return the favor and put dead flowers on her grave. Melodically, the song uses D, A, and G in the intro and verses, with a D sus 2 thrown into the intro before the initial D chord. With the song written in D major, this is a 1-5-4 pattern. Interestingly, uh, also used in Katy Perry's Teenage Dream, albeit in a different key. The pre-chorus uses A, D, A and D, which are the uh, 5 and 1 chords, forming a perfect cadence, while the chorus uses G and D, with some D sus 4 and D sus 2 extensions played too, before ending on G, A and D. This is a 4 1 4 5 1 pattern. Instrumentally, the song contains an acoustic guitar as well as an electric guitar and drums and bass. This is a Rolling Stones song that, like Wild Horses, Angie, Country Honk, and uh, Girl with Faraway Eyes, can be credited to the Stones' involvement with Graham Parsons, who influenced them to experiment with country and the California sound. Structurally, the song contains a verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, solo, pre-chorus, chorus format. Similar to many songs that we've looked at, every bit of information necessary for us as listeners has been revealed after two verses, so adding a bridge is unnecessary. But adding a pre-chorus back after uh, that chorus and that solo uh, and all of that, uh, that really adds that tension uh, while also feeling familiar, so it just works super well in that regard. Uh, the contrast while uh, she's in a Cadillac and he's in his basement is a very cool choice, and as the verses progress, we can see the regression of the narrator. It's just the right amount of regression shown uh, without getting over the top dark. So, uh, Dead Flowers by The Stones is uh, linked in this video. Uh, we're now going to shift gears and talk about uh, Dead Flowers by Miranda Lambert, and uh, you can find that linked below as well. So, uh, Dead Flowers by Miranda Lambert. In her take on this title, she immediately differentiates by her explicit mention of blooming flowers at the beginning of the relationship, as well as comparing herself rather than the relationship as a whole to the flowers. Her ex once told her she looked pretty, just like the flowers looked pretty. She then begins to mix similes by saying uh, she feels like Christmas lights in January. Like the dead flowers until you take them out, they're just going to sit there and not do anything, just like the relationship. And as she drives away, the lights aren't on, the flowers are still dead, and he doesn't even notice, even though a hurricane 
and rainy days are uh, present. Uh, so, but even through that, uh, he still thinks that the weather is nice. And that's a, a metaphor for the relationship, right? Because uh, he's like, oh, everything's fine, even though it's storming around him and he can't tell the difference. Um, so it's really interesting in that regard. Uh, it should be noted too that it doesn't always work to mix metaphors like that, but uh, sticking with the flowers for the whole time would have kind of made it drag a little bit, I think, and so uh, having all of these visuals at once is uh, really cool, and then it's all to the backdrop of those dead flowers, which is how the song starts out. Uh, melodically, the song is written in uh, E major, with the capo on the second fret. She alternates between the E and the A on the guitar for the verses, which is a one and four pattern. Really liking those one and four chords uh, with all of these songs. That's pretty wild. The chorus starts off on E and A, followed by B minor, B and A, uh, and then ending on that E, which is uh, a one, four, five, uh, minor fifth, right? And then major fifth, uh, followed by the four and the one chords. Instrumentally, uh, it uses a guitar, steel pedal, drums, and bass. The song uh, uses a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus format. The verse, uh, first verse is twice as long as the second, and after the last chorus, she keeps repeating like dead flowers until the song fades out. Like I said, mixed metaphors don't always work in songs, but they do incredibly well here. Using only that flower metaphor would have also been dead like the flowers, and had she done that, it wouldn't have had the same impact. But the use of the lights gives it an added kick, and uh, as she's driving away, she sees everything that doesn't work. So uh, it's us as the listeners, and then we're kind of in the car with her, right, as she's driving away. Um, so the dead flowers, uh, like I said, were a microcosm of the rest of the things that were going wrong. I also love the visual of a rearview mirror in a song, uh, as it gives us a good visual as listeners uh, to uh, have that be the last thing that we discussed uh, in the verses. Um, it's uh, it's really cool. Uh, shout out to Hootie and the Bluefish for that with the idea of a cracked rear view. Um, maybe that inspired these songwriters as well. Uh, but it is uh, just a fabulous song, uh, Dead Flowers, albeit a very different one uh, than uh, the Rolling Stones song. Uh, but uh, I hope that it inspired you to uh, write a third song called Dead Flowers. Um, a lot of places that you can take it. And uh, happy writing as always. I'm Minnesota Mike on behalf of the Memphis Songwriters Association. Be sure to check out all my other vlogs, all my other blogs, uh, and um, all of that good stuff on my YouTube channel. Again, I'm Minnesota Mike. Thank you so much.